Hi guys, welcome back. You know, yesterday was such a blast and I had so much fun, but I was also blessed and encouraged in the word. And guess what? We're still going. But before we go into today's program, I want to encourage you to follow us on our Instagram page. There's always something amazing going on and would like you to be a part of it. Today, we'll be hearing from Daniel Duchal. He'll be giving us the word. But before we do that, let's have some fun. Let's worship God in praise and worship. Thank you. 
Yeshua Adonai, you're the name above every name. Elohim El Shaddai, you are Yeshua and Adonai, you're the
Hey everybody, I am uh, so I'm so blessed and so excited to be sharing a word with you. I I believe we are in uh, such an interesting time uh, in the world, and I uh, I'm so excited because I believe that God is, is is calling us and calling His children closer closer to Him in this time, uh, both old and young. And uh, it's such an important important season to be attentive and hearing what the Lord is saying. And uh, some things that I, I feel like God's put on my heart to share with you guys, especially uh, the youth, um, and things that potentially may also be getting in the way of what we are trying to do as far as pursuing the Lord. And so um, today I'm going to be um, just sharing a bit of those things and uh, hopefully we'll be, be leaving blessed and encouraged by these things. Um, but if you are taking notes or you want to write something down, uh, the title of, uh, of of my message and my talk is going to be on um, remaining in the vine. So I don't know if you guys are taking notes during these times, but I highly recommend that you do, um, as I really believe this will help you guys. Um, so just before we start, I'm going to jump right in and we're going to be reading out of John 15 verses 1 to 11. And uh, I'm just going to read that and then we will we'll dive in and see what we can pull out of this. Um, all right, so. If you have your Bibles, come to John 15 and verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, of itself unless it abides in the vine so neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him he bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burned If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full now there's so much in this passage and something that's been standing out to me so much is this concept of abiding in the lord and remaining in the lord i want to share a bit more about that but as young believers i i i feel like we sometimes look upon our faith and uh, at least i have and, and and we wonder maybe sometimes why we don't always enjoy some of the things that we read about or that we hear about, whether it's, you know, you're abiding in his love or, or that our joy is made full. We read these things and we're like, man, as young believers, sometimes it feels like we're not able to grasp these things fully or we're not able to, to really experience these things. And, and I say as young believers because we're all young people listening to this or, or most of us or and there's people that have gone on for years and years in the faith that have been walking this walk for 40, 50 years. And I think those are well seasoned men and we are still working out our understanding of the Lord and how our relationship with him works. But as we as we sometimes feel there's this there's somewhat of a mismatch between what we're reading and what we're experiencing, I want you to understand that it's not necessarily that by becoming a believer that we all of a sudden just immediately enjoy all of the things that God has put in place for us, all of the giftings. We don't immediately just come to 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 have access to all of that. But when we become believers, we are joined to the Father, but it is by remaining in the Lord and it is by remaining in that unity with the Father that all of a sudden we start to enjoy the purity and the power and the blessing that comes from being in communion with Him constantly. And all the goodness and all the treasures that he has stored up for the righteous are things that start to come to fruition in our lives. I feel like as young people, sometimes when we set our hearts to pursue the Lord, 
we may start, we may begin and we spend a little bit of time with the Lord and then all of a sudden we start to get a little closer and we have a good time in the Word or we pray and it's like, man, I really, I feel like I'm on fire. But then all of a sudden things start to get worse. The things that you thought you were dealing with in your flesh or uh, the temptation in your life start to become greater again. You're like, wow, how, how come when I've turned my eyes to the Lord, now all of a sudden the, the temptation and these things start to rise up? But I want, I want, as we unpack this, I want you to see that it's, it's not by now trying to toil and fight those things that we win, but it's by simply learning to remain in the Father and remain in the vine. And I want to read a small passage here out of uh, John 8, verses 31 to 32. It says this, it says, So Jesus was saying to those Jews, who had believed him. So these are these are people who had believed him already. They were Jews that already had believed him. So it would be believers. It would be you and me for those of us who believe. It says, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That is so powerful because it says that if you continue in my word, and the key word here is if you continue, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Guys, there's such a big difference between believing, as it says in the, in the beginning here. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, they really believed. And, and some of us, I feel like sometimes we can get stuck in the phase of believing and not remaining and not continuing in the word and not continuing to pursue. And, 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 and therefore not feeling like we really become true disciples and therefore not feeling like we know the truth and therefore the truth not setting us free. And I want you to really lock into the word continue there. But it's impossible for us to know the truth all at once or to be set free all at once. But we learn this by remaining in Jesus. And the deeper we go, the more we learn, the more free we become and the more joy we start to receive out of the blessing of being in communion, out of the blessing of remaining with him and continuing with him and staying in the vine. And and. To some, they may be like, well, why would, why would Jesus want to make it so difficult? But I, I don't believe that it's to make it difficult for us. I don't believe that it's to make it a challenge to say, well, you better do this. No, I don't believe it's that. I believe, it's, I believe he does literally this thing out of mercy and out of grace for us. In, 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 John, in, John, um, in John 15, it says up here at the top, it says, if you abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it'll be done for you. It says, ask whatever you wish, and it'll be done for you. Imagine we were in a position where we could ask God whatever we wanted and whatever we desired, whatever we wish, whatever we wish. There's no, there's no cap on that. It doesn't say if whatever you wish, if, 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 if. No, it just says whatever you wish. But it says, if you abide in me and my words in you. But there's no limit on what we wish. It's an open-ended wish. And what's amazing about that is that if God allowed us to have access to all of this right up front, imagine we asked for what we wished while we were still full of the natural desires and we were still full of the lusts in our flesh. But as we start to remain and as we start to continue in his word, we then become full of heavenly desires and we remain in him what starts to happen is that the very things that we start to wish for are no longer earthly things. They're not carnal things. They're not things that we desire out of the lust and, 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 and the nature of our flesh, but they become things that we desire from the Spirit, which in turn start to become His will. The things that we wish start to become His will. So it's very safe for Him to say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Those words are spoken not to a believer who has just jumped in for the first few minutes, but these are spoken to a believer who has continued in his faith, who has held on, who has not wavered, but who has stayed steadfast. And as young people, that's something that's so difficult, I think, for us, is to remain, to stay constant. I mean, for me, sometimes I feel like, even with the small things, it's difficult, like, you know, whether it's learning an instrument or, or, or playing a sport or going to the gym, 
the only way any of these things bear any fruit in our lives is by consistency and by remaining in them. And the moment we stop remaining in them, we're not able to enjoy all of the things that come from those things. And it's the same with the Father. It's the exact same thing with the Father. So I believe that He does this for us out of grace, out of mercy. And sometimes as young believers, we struggle with that. We struggle with the concept of there being time to this thing. Like, well, how long? How many years will I have to will I have to do this before I start to, to experience the joy? But it has nothing to do with that. It's not about the time. It's about entering into a place where we abide with the Lord, where we are intimately acquainted with His ways and where He is intimately acquainted with our ways. And there's the relationship. But if it's out of our natural desire, it'll always be a rush. It'll always be to try to find something. Here's the thing, as believers, I feel like we start to run. And as young people, we start to run. And we turn our face, and I say this, but we, we start to fall. And then when we fall in this pursuit, we start to feel like we've lost all momentum. We start to look at ourselves and say, man, I didn't, I wasn't able to keep running entirely and I and I and I stumbled or I fell or I, I fell into sin or I, I was lustful or whatever it may be, all of a sudden we then pull back and we say, okay, well hang on, now I've got to I've got to try to regroup and, and try to figure out how to do this again. But guys, I want you to understand something that it is not by our own power. It is not by our own strength to to even overcome sin. We cannot overcome this in our in our natural man. We cannot just all of a sudden say, okay, well today I'm just going to overcome in my flesh, the flesh. The flesh cannot overcome the flesh. You cannot overcome your desires by your own strength and your own desire. But it comes by the word. It comes by spending time with the Lord. So the only way we can overcome is through the word. But more importantly, it's by continuing in the word. It's by remaining in him that will be full of joy as it says it says that your that, that that your joy, that his that my joy may be in you, and that your more joy may be full, made full. Guys, God desires is to make your joy full. He desires to to bring good things to your life. He desires to 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 fill your heart with 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 peace and with joy that is that is strength and righteousness. It is the most beautiful thing possible. The thing is, when we look at our lives. There's nothing that is too impossible for God. There's nothing that is too hard for him. There is no amount of blessing, if you will, that he cannot just pour out on you in an instant. There's no amount of promotion that he cannot just give you in a second. He can do anything he wants. He can do so much. But we cannot give you, what he cannot give you in an instant is your character. He cannot give you instant in an instant your character. He cannot overnight just give you patience and kindness and, and tender heartedness he cannot give those things to you those things take time which is why I say it is out of his mercy and out of his grace that he allows us to have to continue because only by continuing are we made full I want you to read your passage quickly from James I don't have my notes I should have had a little bookmark but I don't but come to James I don't know where is it here If you come to James uh, chapter 1, James chapter 1 says this, it says, verse 1 to 4, it says, um, I'll start in verse 2 actually, it says, Consider it all joy, my, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and some versions say produces patience. Verse 4, it says, And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And I'll read verse 4 again with patience. It says, And let patience have its perfect result so that you may be made perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Guys, there's something so beautiful about this where the Lord allows us to go through things, not because he's trying to push us or test us or made a, make us uh, or, to, or to tease us. He, he's putting us through things so that he can ultimately bless us. He does all of this knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience. The testing, guys, when you fall, when you stumble, when you find yourself in, in these places of sin, endure, 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 endure. The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times but gets back up. May we be the ones that get back up. When we get back up, knowing that the endurance, enduring on the path, 
has its perfect result. And when it's perfect, we will be made perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Guys, we start to lack in nothing. Patience has its perfect course. We lack in nothing. So remember that as we are abiding in the word, as we are spending time with the Lord, spending time seeking his presence, spending time with him, as you fall and stumble, you will fall and stumble on the way. But as you, as you spend time, you'll stumble less, you'll fall less. It will start to change your life and it'll take patience. But as the patience does its full work in you, you'll be complete. And when you're complete, and you're only made complete through patience, and you only have patience through enduring. You endure, you become patient. Patient is complete, and by patience and this completeness, you'll be full, and you'll be lacking of nothing. When we reflect on the life of Moses, or shall I say in the life of Joseph, we'll get to Moses just now, but when we reflect on the life of Joseph in the Bible, he was in this place where he had all these promises. And some of you in your lives have been given promises by God. You've had prophetic words. You've had people speak into your lives. And, and even if you haven't from this person, you've all had prophetic words from God and who he's called you to be. And you have Joseph who was headed for this palace. He was headed to be in this incredible position. He had dreams. He had visions of this thing. But for years he was in prison. I promise you that nobody would have thought. Who would have thought? Including himself. How would you possibly think? But in that time, he even tried to make a plan for himself to get out of prison, but he couldn't. God wouldn't allow it because God was working with him, within him endurance. He was working within him patience so that by the time he was elevated to where God wanted him to be, he was ready to carry it. He was ready to hold it. And the same thing happened with Moses. Moses, from the time when he first killed an Egyptian to set one of his Hebrew brothers free, he was trying to help his Hebrew brother. He was already, a, he was a deliverer from the beginning. He was, he had the heart of the Lord to, to set his people free from the start, but he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to carry it. So God had him in the desert for 40 years or however long where he was taking care of sheep and just doing things that seem so mundane and boring. But in that God was producing patience. He was producing meekness. He says that Moses was the meekest man in the world. But it took time, it took patience. And so sometimes God has you on a path where you sense like, man, I don't feel like my life is of any significance right now. I feel like I'm doing nothing. And you start to compare, you can fall and say, well, I look at this person's life and I look at this person's life and how come my brothers put me in a pit like Joseph? I'm in a pit and my brothers are out there living their lives, getting married, having their friends. And I'm in a pit. But God had other plans. And sometimes you may feel obscure, you may feel like your life is obscure, but I promise you, that as you remain with the Father, as you remain with Jesus, He has other plans. And His plans are for your joy to be made complete and for you to be made complete. In John 15 verse 2, which is the same passage from the beginning, it says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Guys, when you look at Moses, when you look at Joseph, these men had to go through pruning. And as believers, I feel like sometimes a lot of people turn away in the times of pruning. And the pruning is something that God does with our lives continually. But people turn away in a time of pruning because when God is pruning us, he's bringing to the surface things that are holding us back from being more closely rooted and more intimate with him. And if we are unwilling to let go of the things that entangle us and the lusts of our flesh and the envy in our hearts and the desires for riches or the desires for fame, even though we know in our hearts deeply that we've never been satisfied by those things, we have to allow the Lord to cut those things away because if he doesn't, we cannot bear more fruit. Because the only way we bear fruit, as it says in this passage, is by abiding in him. And a branch cannot bear fruit, in verse 4, of itself, unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. So unless we abide in the Lord, we cannot bear fruit to begin with. And the fruit we, we start to bear is useless. So as we come into the vine, to be grafted into a vine, you have to cut the branch. You cut it 
is a cutting that takes place initially and we get grafted into the vine. But then he prunes the vine. He prunes us. I mean, he prunes the branch. And so we must allow him to start to prune our lives. And it's painful. But there are things that he starts to prune out of our lives. And you know this if you've ever tried to seek the Lord. But there's things that we can't keep doing, guys. There's things that we must allow him to remove. Not by our strength, but we must allow him. We live in a time now where every voice is telling us as young people to take our lives for ourselves. To build whatever you want for yourself. Make it as great as you want to. You build your life. To, 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 make, to make the best of what you have. Because the time is short. But guys, I promise you something. Eternity is much longer. Let us prepare for eternity. Not prepare for our lives. Our lives are short. May we prepare for what is to come. If we desire to be great, is that not a desire driven from our own pride in our hearts? If we start to think of other people as more important than ourselves, will the love of God not be shown more through that than through any greatness that we could possibly achieve in our own strength? I think so. I think it, I think it would be so much more beautiful. And the love of God would be so much more evident. But may we check our hearts as we pursue the Lord, as he brings things up in our hearts. May we start to check our hearts. If I say to you that you may never achieve or attain much wealth on the earth while you follow Christ, or you may never achieve or attain any fame while following Christ, does that deter your heart? from seeking him does that make you hesitant to now seek the Lord may money never be the thing that gets in the way of our eternal promise of the Lord may fame never be something that we hold as more esteemed than the Lord that we put in, in more of a highlight than the Father but guys as we get close to him these are the things we must check our hearts on where are our desires are our desires for money are our desires for are our desires based in the lusts of our flesh or are they, are they purely based in the Lord we must allow him to check those things we must allow him when he convicts us of those things we must allow him to 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 gently cut away those things from our lives some of you may feel like well if I pursue God I might be wasting my time I know you to feel like it's like well what if I pursue and the enemy to lie to me and say well if you pursue God maybe you're wasting your time spending that you could be building your business. You could be building your life. You could be putting time into, into starting up your, you know, <laughs> brainstorming ideas and coming up with, with ways to make money or <laughs> all this nonsense. But guys, like I said earlier, God can give you everything in a moment, but he cannot give you the fruits of the spirit in a moment. We must allow ourselves to start to become like the father. We must allow ourselves to become like Jesus and not turn away under the knife, but instead... I encourage you to lean into the knife. Let the knife become a part of your daily life where you ask him, say, Father, cut away from me the things that need to be cut away. Prune me of the things that need to be pruned that I may be closer to you, that my joy may be made complete and my joy may be made full in you. May this be our prayer. May we pray that we become closer to the Father, that we may rest in the vine. The thing is, all fruit all fruit comes from the vine. Yes, we can serve. Yes, we can do these things. We can even serve in the natural. But the true fruit of the Spirit comes from the vine. And the fruit, as we bear fruit, is not necessarily just to do good. But the fruit is that we are filled and abounding in love. That we are abounding in patience. That we are able to endure when others aren't able to endure. That we are able to be kind to one another. That we are able to, to die to ourselves just as Christ also died. That when faced with an opportunity to be angry or to, to fight back or to, 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 to defend ourselves, is that not also based in pride? Is that not also our pride that needs to rise up to, to defend myself? Or do you know, 
Does God not see everything that is going on in your heart? Does God not know everything that is happening in your life? That he cannot repay good for good and evil for you. He knows. He repays good. He, he is the one who vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He is the one who weighs the balances and the scales. He knows. It is not our place. But that fruit doesn't come just by accepting the Lord. That fruit comes by spending time with the Lord. He knows the things you desire. And he knows the things behind the things you desire. May we desire a deep intimacy with God. You know, I even think of the things that we desire in the natural. And are those things not a deeper desire crying out? For example, even if it's the desire of lust in your life or it's the, the desire of the flesh, is that not a deeper desire to be intimately known? Is it not a deeper desire to be, to be proximate and to be close and the desire to be fully understood? I think it is. I think it is. And God wants that relationship with you. I heard a quote once, and it was by a famous man. Um, I can't remember who he was, but I remember the quote. And it said this, he said, I wish someone would have told me that when you get to the top, there's nothing there. And I can tell you this, guys, that there is nothing there at the top. All the world has to offer. Everything that shines and, and flashes here is of no fruit. It's of no significance. And when you finally attain all of it, you'll realize that it's just wind. It is nothing. But what lasts forever is what God is doing in your heart. And God cares more about what he's doing inside of you than what he is bringing to you. He cares more about the change that takes place within your heart, within your life, that you become more like Christ than he does all the things that you accomplish. Because all the things you accomplish without that don't count. If the fruit does not come from him, it is fruit that can only lead to destruction. But if the fruit comes from him, it is abounding in life and it is everlasting fruit. And my desire is that you see how beautiful the fruit is and how beautiful abiding in is not to toil, it's not to get out there and do stuff for God so much. He will lead you into those things. But may the desire be to be close to him. May your first desire to be intimate with the Lord and to continue and to remain. We must have nothing before him. My desire is that we be ready for the things that God wants to do in our lives. It's not a matter of what he's able to do in our lives. It's a matter of are we prepared? Are we ready? Are we able to carry those things? Are we trustworthy? Or will we be led astray by the first desire of the flesh that we are tempted with? Or will we be led astray by the first amount of money or the first, uh, the first glittering lust? I really hope that we become a generation that is filled with the fervor of God, that is rooted in a relationship and a depth and a, an intimacy with God. And that our lives start to become constantly subject to the graceful and gentle cutting of the knife and the pruning. May we know that in a world, especially now where nothing is sure, tomorrow is not promised us, Economies are not promised us. Financial stability is not promised us. But the promises of God are sure. My desire is that we don't be a generation that says we will one day, one day we will become men and women of God. May we be those people now. May we be those men and women of God now who choose him above all else, that we will be free and come to know the truth in its fullness in Jesus Christ. That the joy will be complete. That we will know the fullness of his joy in our lives. That we will be complete, lacking nothing. For those of you who have sensed and you've been sensing that God is pulling on your hearts to be closer to him. Please don't wait. Don't wait. 
Every Everything you need, everything you desire is within him. Stop trying to work for it. Don't try to trick your way into it. Turn to him. Continue to turn to him. For those of you who feel like your life is too much of a mess, you may feel like, well, man, I just, I, I'm not in a place right now where I'm living my life right. <laughs> and you think, the, the, come, the time will come when I'll just, you know, I'm going to clean everything up and then I'm going to start following God. Guys, do not wait. Do not wait. Don't even wait to be cleaned up. Do not wait. In all of your mess, in all of your, in all of your, your, your sin, turn to the Lord. Turn to him. The Bible says that he is your ever-present help in a time of need. Guys, sometimes we're falling and we need and we need him. We don't just need him after, we need him in the present. So if your life is full of sin, if your life is full of repent, repent, guys, turn to him. He is present. He's there with you. There's no hoops you must jump through. He wants to be close to you. Allow your life to come under the knife. Guys, it'll always stop you. If you don't allow your life to come under the knife, it'll always stop you from becoming closer to him. And you will always be limited. And you will look at the word and say, Lord, why am I not getting more? Allow him to start to cut the things from your life that need to be cut. Allow him to speak to your heart. He longs to carry your burdens, guys. He longs to carry the things you struggle with. Allow him to. And if it takes time, it takes time. But lean into the knife. He longs to be in close relationship with you. And for those of you who say, Lord, I, I want to be close to you. He desires that more than you. He longs to be close to you more than you desire it yourself. Because more than anything, may we grow up. May we grow up to be the generation that says, you know what? We went with the Lord. We trusted in God. May we be the generation that says, you know, from our time we were young, from the time we were the youth, when we were kids, we made a decision that said we will follow God with our whole hearts, with our whole strength and our whole might. May we be those people. And may the fruit be abounding in our lives. That we get to a place when we say whatever we wish before the Lord, that it will be done for us. May we abide in Him and may His words abide in us. Spend time in the Word. Read your Bibles. Even in the filth, read your Word. But continue with it. Guys, the key is to continue. Stay in the word. I wish I wish there were um, uh, I wish there was a more sneaky, glamorous way, but there is no sneaky, glamorous way, guys. There's no tip, there's no trick to your connection with Jesus. There's no formula. But if you try to approach your relationship with God in any other way, besides relating with him and sharing your life with him, you'll always be disappointed. And as young people, I feel like sometimes we don't quite know how to approach the Lord. But I urge you now to approach him. Simply approach him. Don't figure it out before. Don't have your life cleaned up before. Come to him now. Call upon his name now. Allow him to start to search your heart and he will. He longs to be close to you. He desires to be close to you. And everything that you desire is within him. Did he not create everything? Did he not create everything? Your husband, your wife, the things you long for, put those desires in his hand. Be close to him. Seek first his kingdom and everything else will be added to you. Allow him to build into you character and patience and gentleness and kindness. And I promise you, your joy will be made complete and you'll be lacking nothing if we pursue patience and endure. Remain in the vine. Just remain. You have nothing else to do. Remain in the vine. Let's close and pray. Father, I thank you that you hear us. Lord, I thank you that even as I'm speaking, God, you are starting to move in the hearts of whoever is listening. Everyone who's under my voice is already feeling your prompting, God, to, to be closer to you. Lord, sometimes we don't quite know how to approach. We don't even know how to sometimes do this the right way. But Lord, we, we still choose to make ourselves available to you. Lord, help us to know that we don't have to 
toil to to be loved by you but God you've already you've already loved us you already have made the decision to choose us so Lord may we rest and abide in the knowing of your of your goodness may we rest knowing that all fruits that all we desire comes from you that anything that tries to distract us is is paling in comparison to spending time with the creator of everything so God right now I pray that for the people that are longing to be close to you Lord that you would reveal yourself to them as they pursue thank you Lord that this word will take root into people's hearts that they may remember that all they need is to abide in the vine and that you are the vine and all goodness comes from you I pray this in Jesus name Amen